Là. Tu madre.
Good afternoon. Today is the day that we finish all this anatomy. That is, that is the goal. So get get your. And I wanted to start a little bit earlier. This is actually this is actually class time. Uh, but usually I start till until five. But like I mentioned last time, I want to finish this, and we're more than halfway there. Uh, so we're going to continue with this drawing, this uh, anatomical drawing. And I did pretty much the whole arm, you know, back uh, side and front view. We just need this part of, of the arm. This is the back view of the right arm. And so we're going to go in here and try and finish that. And then we'll move on down to the, down the leg, the upper leg, the lower leg. So uh, get all your things ready. Make sure you've got your, your drawing uh, set up and your pastels and your color pencils or anything, anything else you might, you might need. And right before here, before, before we start on this, uh, you want to go in here on this part, on this section of the drawing, and uh, just to help us a little bit more in, in placing all these uh, uh, features, you see, this is this is the elbow uh, radius. This is the radius, the ulna, and this you know this whole area here is the elbow. You want to do this V shape. This is, uh, see, I've got some white here that indicates this ridge, another uh, growth or projection out of the 
out of the uh, out of this bone, out of the out of the ulna. And that that's going to help you in, in uh, setting boundaries for the muscles that we're going to add here. All right, so that you want to you want to have that on there. Uh, because that's going to help us with the <clears throat> the uh, the first muscles we're going to start adding here. Uh, predominantly, we'll have the extensor muscles, but coming in from the inside of the arm in in this area, let me show you what what they're going to look like. The ones we're going to put on here. You see this? this? These are flexors, the one we're gonna do first. And then the other ones are extenders. Uh, so we're gonna, this is the first one we're gonna do here. And this is the flexor carpi ulnaris, this muscle here. And this one goes on top of this one. We're not gonna draw this because it, it gets covered up by the this is the flex, the flexor carpi radia, carpi ulnaris, and it covers up this one. This is the more superficial form, and this is the deeper form. And it, of course, you you look here at the at my drawing. I already kind of have an outline of what the arm is supposed to look like. And this muscle, it comes right here. It it creates this contour of your of your lower arm. And it attaches here. And then along this, this line that creates this Y, right? It stays within this general area here. It just goes down following that line. It, that line breaks up the, the ulna into about equal halves. And you see it, it, it stops right before we get to the bottom of the, of the ulna. This is the wrist. This bone, is, you can feel that on your, that's gonna be that right there. There's on the, but on the left, on the right of me. Uh, So that's the space is going to occupy. And starting up, up here, you've got this distance here. About half of it is actual muscle here. The other one is a, uh, what it's referred to is like, a, it's called an aponeurosis which is a sheet-like uh, tissue. So this portion, let me get my softer, this is the portion that gets, that's gonna get covered up here with the actual muscle. And I'm going to use yellow. You know, the condyles, epicondyles, those never really get covered up with, uh, with muscle. Those are bony landmarks. You know, I've mentioned that before. I just want to make a note of that. You want to leave that exposed there. And then the rest of it, I'm going to use. And this portion, this is the aponeurosis. So that is the the flexor carpi ulnaris. The superficial form of it. So 
So this is the flexor, the flexor group. And then the yep, other, I'm gonna use some white here. Just to separate it from the pink, because you know, see all this is still this white that I'm adding. This is still part of the of the ulna. The, you might be familiar with this if you like chicken wings. This is the part of the chicken wing that has the two little bones. So that still le leaves us a good amount of space there for more bones, for more, for more muscles. Uh, and I wanna highlight this part of the elbow here. Uh, and remember, you wanna, you wanna do, remember these that we did at the very start here today, this Y shape, uh, and that is a ridge, like I said, for bone, for muscles to attach. I'm just trying to clean this up a little bit more. And we'll use some uh, I'll use some some green, and I, again from this, from this line here that makes this Y. Or this at this point it's like it could be a V or a long, very long Y. Uh, from here, from the top, the it's a triangular muscle. It's a very small muscle here. Is this, and then. It covers part of the radius here. This is the aconius. Or aconius. And I'm going to fill it in with green, like light green here. And just a little bit of shading so it looks. Red. Uh, and I'm going to put a little bit of white here for the. Condown of the humerus. And I don't want to lose this. Remember, this is never covered up totally by muscles. I want to bring that out. So that takes care of two. And now, now we're going to go back uh, to the muscles that, that we did uh, on the front view. Uh, but of course, you also see part of them on the on the back, uh, and the the very first one is that I'm going to do here that it's going to it's going to create this uh, contour. It's the brachioradialis. And let me show you what it looks like on my notes. It's going to be this. See where it attaches way up there. Uh, now keep in mind that it attaches on the on the humerus. Keep in mind on this drawing we already put in here the we have here the tricep, lateral head, and the medial. 
So part of it is going to be obstructed. It starts, you know, it starts way up here, but we're only going to see it here. See it right here. And it attaches right there to the uh, to the radius. So this is the brachial brachial radialis. And uh, Down here is tendon. And just to show you, it, it, it does this. It's part of that ridge group of, uh, of ext extensors here. But th there's going to be another one that's going to overlap it, and you won't see. This is like if you're seeing through it. Uh, but it, quickly, we will cover that up. So this is a break your radialis. And this is the tricep medial head here. It overlaps it. Uh, this, I don't know if you remember, but I, I you can't see it here, but I, the, I just remember that I think the deltoid, I made it too thick. You can't see it right now, but I'll go back and fix it later. Remember this, the back part of the arm is, the, is wider than the front. So this covers up the other brachialis muscle. Uh, so, and this that starts under the brachialis is the brachioradialis, which is all the way down. And then right next, right overlapping that, a little bit lower. Uh, let me get another color here. Let me get the blue. Right here. Right underneath it, you have and it, it wraps over it. I'll put some white so we can you can see it better. Uh, this is the extensor carpi radialis radi, radi, radialis longus. This is a and that we don't we're not going to see much of it on this other than here. Uh, but I'll show you why it's called the long the it's called longus here. Uh, let me show you. It has a very long, uh, let's see, see, it's this one. Its muscle form is very, it's small. And then its tendon portion is very long. 
But then down here, it gets, you know, most of it gets covered up by this other one, the extensor carpi radial, radialis brevis. So it'll, it'll get covered up. And so I'm going to just outline it and see if I've got the 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 head here of the radius and it, it does not. And so here, again, this a little bit of that white of the head of the of the radius. And then now I'm going to move on to to a green. Right next to it. Right below that. And also starting up here, this is this is the humerus. And it's gonna cover up the brachioradialis. We're gonna cover up this portion. And a little bit of white so that you can see a little bit better. And then I'll outline it with black here. So this is the extensor carpi radialis uh, brevis. It covers up the, the one under, underneath it. That color stands out nicely. And its tendon goes, it goes uh, right here. Put some yellow so it stands out more. And then I'll outline it. And maybe it gets a little bit wider right next to the extensor carpi radialis longus right there. It's a nice color, it stands out very nice. And then the, the next group, it's three muscles. Uh, that are gonna occupy this, you know, we, we've got this space here. 
part of the ulna and part of the, of the radius. And they're also coming up here, uh, coming from this area, from the, from the humerus. This is very expensive real estate on the arm in this area. Uh, up here where they all where they all share a very very small uh, space where they all connect. And let me show you which ones are the the these three. What's I say it's three it's three forms. You know this one, you know, one two and three, but it's actually like uh, five muscles. Uh, you know the extensor digitorum. That's actually the extensor digitorum and the extensor digiti is a smaller one. So that little piece there, right there. The extensor carpi ulnaris. And then these two that move the thumb, the ab abductor and the extensor for the, for the thumb. So those are the ones that are next and that, that will finish up the arm. Uh, so let me pick a color, let me go with orange. Let's see which one to start off with. We'll start off with the two that that move the the thumb, the adductor and extensor of the uh, of the thumb. And this the drawing right now. This portion has. Uh, very little pastel in here. So look, this, this muscle is gonna start up here. So I got a text from uh, from our model, this we already have a model for the class. Uh, it's ready for next week. See this? It, you got the ulna and the radius. See where they connect here? That's gonna be where these muscles. The, and I'm I'm gonna do these first because they're underneath. The other two. So this is one form. And I'm going to fill it in with the red. With the orange. This is the abductor. And then a little bit of white. And I made a little too, at least a little bit of it. And it's then then goes down to the thumb. Put some white over it. A little bit.
and then there's a smaller portion right underneath it. Maybe put white. Just so that they look a little bit different to different values of, of red. Maybe a little bit more red. It looks too much like the paper. And of course, this one as well, it has a, it's tendon like, or it's tendon right next to it, also onto the thumb. They create, you know, different movements. Now I'm going to go in and put the, the next two. Uh, I think I can use some blue. And this, this one, it will overlap here the Iconius, this green one. Um, and uh, so when I put this, it will be a little bit over it, see like that. And it's going to descend all the way down to the wrist. But and see this one, it is going to come in here on this exposed area of the of the ulna. It's gonna leave like half of this for, for the next muscle. I think it's gonna go for the, for the last one that we're gonna add here. And just give me some time here to make it more even white. I just want to get some opacity with the white. So right next to this one here. And then it's a tendon portion. It ends right there. And some yellow which separated from all the white. I'll, I'll 
I'm also going to go over this with some black. And it has a it has this portion of tendon that goes into it. And it does this here. And this is the extensor carpi ulnaris. there. Now this, this space that is left over, it is for the extensor digitorum, which has two, two parts. And what color can I use here? Violet. Some violet here. And well, first of all, I'll put, I'll put some white. Because this one, this one sits on top of this green one and this blue one, in, but starting in the same general area. Put white, and then I'll I'll fill it in with the violet. And then this one, its tendons go into the four fingers. One, two, three, and four. I'll clarify this in a little bit. Yes. I look there. Let me outline the tendons. And some shading here so it looks more round, looks kind of flat at this point. To make it stand out from the from the surrounding muscles here. You see, I've got the three tendons, one, two, three, and the fourth one, that is the one that is used by the other form. I want to separate this. Like 
spray some shading. And that's going to be for the arm. So the major muscles that create form on the lower arm. And let me outline it on this section as well. So then now this guy is looking more more complete. Uh, but, and that was what was missing on the arm was that we had done front, side, and now we've completed the, the back view. So now we can move on to the to the lower to the lower part of the body, you know, the the upper leg, lower leg, uh, and the important muscles of the pelvis here, of course, the gluteus muscles, which are like, they're like three different forms, but there's two primary ones that we're gonna, actually the, the, the gluteus maximus here, that's gonna go after we deal with this forms here, because these are gonna cover the attachments of the hamstring group and the vastus lateralis, vastus medialis. A good number of muscles will do here. Uh, so on, on this view, I might have to pick this up a little bit or lower my, I'm gonna pick it up a little bit here so you can see more of the upper leg. See, there it is. I think that right there is, uh, that's good right there. That's a good view. Uh, and so you've got, you have the pelvis, right? You got the pelvis and to start off with, with the muscles here of the lower leg of the, of the upper leg. Now this is, and you just want to become familiar with the, the name of, the, of these bones. The femur. And the femur has different structures. This is the greater, this is called the greater trochanter. This, you know, this uh, part of it. The greater trochanter, it's, it's pretty big. And then there's the lesser trochanter. This little one. And then you see this, this is again, one of those ridges that stands out. And this becomes, again, very expensive real estate on the, on the femur. On, on top of it, muscles attach on this area that I drew here. And on this groove on the side, on the right side and on the, on the, on the inside of the body also. Everything comes and wraps in there. Uh, and also, uh, this, this right here, you want to make sure that you draw this correctly. This is a, a pretty flat area uh, where muscles are, where the hamstring group is going to attach from here. And this is called the echial tuberosity. It's pretty flat area there that is. Uh, where you've got those hamstrings attaching. So they have a, if you, when you see this on natural skeleton, this area is very rough. It has like a lot of tiny little pores. So it creates a lot of grip for those muscles. Um, let me show you. We'll try and go over the major muscles here. Again, there's a lot more things that are very deep uh, and that we really don't see. Let me show you some of my notes to so you understand what, what we're going to be, what we're going to be working on. I have a call here, hold on. Hello? All right, what's up? No, I, I have a, no, I'm teaching, I've got the, I have my,
No, I'm I'm fine. It's just I I got a I have a lot of stuff to go to cover here in class and okay. I'll wait for the recording. Okay. Okay. I'll watch the recording because I, I got class right now. Okay, no, we're good. No, I'm good. No, there's no problem. Okay. All right. I'll talk to you later. All right. All right. All right. All right. That was Professor De Sosa. He uh, he and I and two other professors. We're in a committee. We're hiring. We're gonna suggest people to hire for the photography position. It's incredibly time consuming. Organizing those Zoom meetings and working the schedules of the applicants and the dean and finding the right time for them. Uh, but look, this this is the some of the muscles we're going to be working on here. These are my notes. Uh, see, right here, uh, I've got all this writing to explain what I note for myself and. Uh, Part of this just stuff that I enjoy knowing, you know, for myself to teach uh, when I paint the figure, you know, I have I to have all these notes. So we're gonna do the 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 hamstrings, the hamstring group, and it makes this big form on the back of the leg, but it's actually made up of two. I'm gonna say two forms, but it's you know it's uh, the bicep femoris, this one here. So his bicep means it has two, it has two forms, the long form and a short form down here. And then the semi-tendinosis and the semi-membranosis. So we're gonna do those two first. Uh, and see this, this green muscle here, this is the adductor mangus, magnus. This is a big muscle that gets covered up uh, by muscles on the front of the leg and muscles on, on the back of the leg. Uh, I'll post these notes later if you want to copy them or print them out. Uh, we're not going to draw this, but just so you know, like under what we're going to start to draw here, that's what you will find. And I'll point it out in some section, you know, where you might be able to see it. Uh, but this is a very big muscle on the inner thigh there, but it gets very, it gets covered up by these on the back and then on the front, it gets covered up. Uh, let me show you. I've prepared. Um, any notes, revised notes and some of these might, it'll make more sense when we draw them. See, like this is, uh, Having removed the vastus, the, the rectus femoris muscle, and uh, the, the rectus femoris, and I removed uh, the vastus medialis. So I kind of erased them. Uh, and these are the, the other adductors here. All these cover that big muscle. Uh, you just see a little bit one, but we're, we're not going to draw. We're going to draw because it's going to get covered up. But just so you know, there's that big form, the adductor magnus. And I want, I want to post this here next to it. So we can, I can use it as a, as a reference because it's just a, uh, a complicated form. So I'm gonna, I'm going to, uh, We're gonna start off, uh, you know, with these, with these. Uh, it's it's four muscles, like I said. 
this one on towards the outside of the of the, of the body, uh, this is the bicep femoris. And let me show you where it starts off with some yellow. Way at the bottom here of the screen, let me just lower this a little bit here. This is the area we're gonna focus on right now. <clears throat> and the, this is the tibia and the fibula. This is the head of the, of the fibula. In Spanish is tibia and peroné. And this muscle is gonna start up, up here. It starts up there and on the echial tuberosity, that's what that is called, like I said. And it goes all the way down. I'm gonna just first, see it goes at a slight angle. And it attaches there, see the, the head of the, of the fibula. This is a pretty long muscle here. I would venture to say that this is one of the longest or perhaps the longest muscle here on the, on the figure. So that's where it starts and that's where it ends. Echo tuberosity to the head of the of the fibula. And this is gonna get you know filled up pretty quickly, you know, and I'm gonna cover this nice drawing that I had here. Uh, now just so you know before, I mean it, it I debate which ones to do first, but there's no way of overlapping and covering up. Uh, the only way to do is like if, we, if I drew like, which I've done for my notes, like if I drew like five different bones, five different femurs, and each one showed exactly where each muscle attaches. But you see, I've got this other outline. This outline is this muscle here, the vastus lateralis. Uh, and this muscle, it attaches, it, it uh, goes in here on this groove next to this ridge. It goes in there. Just, and it gets overlapped by the bicep femoris here. But just keep that in mind that, and I'm, when we get to that muscle, I'll try and show you where that goes in there. Uh, but of course, it'll get covered up. So that is the, the bicep, the uh, femoris. And then the next one, I'm also first to show the, the, the way that it connects. Right next to it, uh, they, they have pretty big forms up here. Uh, this one is the, like I said, there's, there's two. There is the semi-membranosis, and the semi-tendinosis. You see two colors of green, that's what that indicates. Uh, and these two muscles uh, start up here and they go on the inside of the fibula. So you just gotta draw this line. to the inside, but just the head of, of the fibula right there. Pretty long muscles. Okay, so now I can, uh, I can give this uh, more form. I'm gonna get my, my uh, 
orange. You know, keep this in mind, you know, as I'm, as I'm uh, drawing this, you know, this is the shape that it has. Fill it in. Make this yellow orange. Of course, it needs white for opacity here. Use the red chalk here to outline it better. So, yeah, that's the bicep femoris. And like I said, it has it has two portions: the the long head and the short head. So this is pretty much the the long portion. You see that the tendon comes up to about that area right there. They, they share the same tendon. Got some shading here separated from the tendon. And then right next to this, of course, you have, uh, you only see a little bit of the short head. And when, when I draw the side view, you'll see more of it because this. These you can see very clearly on the back of your, of your knee. On the back side of the of the leg here, just a little bit of white. This is bicep femoris. This is the short head. That's the long head. And then you also see a little bit of this on uh, this side here. You see, they share the same tendon, but see, this is the long head, and this is the short head. On the side, we'll show that show you where this attaches. This doesn't the short head does not attach way up there. It attaches to the ridge to this ridge that I already covered up. Uh, so there, that is the. And just so it looks prettier. Oops. 
it's a little more cylindrical. And uh, now I'm going to do the next one. Uh, I'll use, try and follow what I have here. I'll use green. <clears throat> In my, my trunk or something. I can outline it here. It has a similar form. Careful when you're drawing this. Okay, so that's gonna be our start with it. Now I'm gonna eventually, like I said, it's it's two muscles, and I, I'll break it up in a little bit, but first let's just keep it this color in this one big form. So what you have here, you, you're going to separate this. See this, this is the semi-tendinosis. And I'm trying to separate the tendon here. And the semi-tendinosis overlaps the semi-membranosis. Now I'll differentiate the, the color so we can see it better. Semi-tendinosis is overlapping. But they share the, the space in which they, the, the tendon comes to, to rest. So that, that is the bottom of the semi-tendinosis. Semi Like I said, the, the maybe I just had black here and it was separated by making it a different value here. So there, there you have it. That is semi tendinosis, and the bottom is semi membranosis. And 
the tendon is at, at first I just made it one tendon to try and keep it simple, but it, it is two, one, they're right next to each other and they're on the, right on the head of the tibia. I think that ended up rather nicely there. And this were the hamstrings. Looks like a leaf or all that green. Uh, another muscle that you want to, oh, you can see from that distance, there's a, a, a bright yellow one here. This is a very thin muscle. It's kind of like a belt, but it keeps all these muscles in its place. It's like the, the inside of the thigh here. Come, this is the, this area up here, this is called the pubis synthesis here. And so this is, this is the gracilis muscle. Very long, very thin. pushes the abductors and the hamstrings. And it, I'll fill it in with the, I'll make it yellow. So this is the gra gracilis muscle, very long, like a belt. You want to think of a, when you put on your belt, that is the structure of this. And see these three muscles attached to the, to the head of the, of the tibia. And they share, uh, when I talk, when I show you the, the anatomy of the lower leg, this part of this, the inside of the tibia, it has no muscle, it's just, bone and a membrane, uh, like an aponeurosis, very strong that, that attaches to these three muscles here. Actually have a, let me show you here on this side. I've got all this covered here. Let me show you, show you this one. Of course, we fully understand this. You gotta draw this from every angle. This is, you know, the leg, the same leg, but of course, you know, the inside of it. Uh, this here is the sartorius, this orange one. This is this is the gracilla right here. And see, it comes down, and it that's where it it, it ends up on the top of the tibia. This is the, the stroking of this is so that it's more, you see the structure of it. And keep in mind here, this gap, I'm just going to fill it in with a little bit of green, but that is the adductor Magnus here also. That is that, you know, this green, this other green muscle here. Uh, and it also comes on this part, on that, on that ridge, a little bit right there. That's so all you end up seeing of that huge muscle. That looks pretty good. Now, uh, you can see here this orange part. That is uh, 
a muscle that comes from the from the front of the pelvis, and it attaches uh, right next to these three. This is the sartorius. So we, like I said, we see a little bit of it here. And it overlaps the bottom here of the, of the femur. See, they all go to the same spot right there. So what else can we do on this angle here? So you've got the, now I can, I can do the vastus lateralis here. I've got this other drawing where I indicate where that muscle is gonna go. I made it a little bit more opaque here. This gets overlapped by uh, an attachment of the gluteus maximus. So look, we're gonna we're gonna move on to these here. So here, this, this contour of the body, this is a pretty big muscle. Uh, this is the vastus lateralis it's because it's to the lateral side or to the outside and on the front view we'll see the vastus medialis because it's on the inside vastus lateralis vastus medialis and remember this is that ridge and this is uh, on this angle it is overlapped by the bicep femoris Long head and short head here. This is all we see of it. We don't see its attachment on the on the front side of the of the tibia, of the head of the tibia. But we'll do that in a little bit. And so I'm gonna I'm going to shade it in for the blue. And a little bit of white. Try falling to it. And you might want to add some shading here. That's the Astus lateralis. And uh, like I said, this is the greater trochanter. This you can feel on your, like you can, you know, easily feel this next to you on your leg, on the top of your leg here, this bone. Again, it's another bony landmark. Uh, 
And on this, 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 uh, there's another muscle called the, it's a very peculiar name here. It's a tensor that attaches to a membrane called the fascia. So it's called a tensor fascia lata. It's like the name of a coffee. But from this back view, we see a little bit of it. A little bit of orange. And this is being overlapped by the vastus uh, lateralis. So it's filling in nicely. And now for one of the one one of the three parts, but really just we're just gonna end up probably seeing like uh, two of the parts that make up the gluteus maximus. So uh, let's let me show you here uh, the gluteus. We're gonna do first the gluteus. Medius. I'm gonna use orange. I'll use a, a yellow orange here. And so you've got the remember these the P C I S, which are bony landmarks. And right on top of that, uh, you have the start of the of the. Uh, Gluteus medius. And that attaches to the top here of the greater trochanter. It does that. And then it does this, kind of like a triangular. And it follows here the, the, no. Let me pick up this a little bit. Okay, there it is. You can see what I'm talking about. It follows the contour here of the of the pelvis, the arch of the pelvis, and it has two portions. We have three portions, but from this angle, we only see two. Part of this will be overlapped by the gluteus maximus. And then, of course, the bottom there is a tendon, thin like structure. And I will. To connect my mouse because it's dying. But I'm not really using it, so I should have time to charge. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the side of my pastel here. Gluteus medius. So yeah, we're getting close here to doing the finishing muscle of back view. to show here the attachment of the, the tendon. Right under the, underneath the,
right under the external leak. So that is the gluteus medius. Gluteus medius and uh, <clears throat> kind of emphasize the two parts there, maybe a little bit of a highlight here, a little bit of a highlight there. To show it's two forms. Looking nice. And now for the for the gluteus maximus to finish up the, the well this is not part well it is part of the leg uh, the muscles of the back of the leg let me show you now so you can see there on my notes. On this side, on this side. Glute, this is the gluteus medius and the gluteus maximus, a lot bigger. And you can decide to make your drawing, you can make your gluteus maximus as big as you want. So you're gonna put them in the right place. Because as you're all aware, they come in all kinds of sizes. Some people have much bigger than other people. So this is my reference here from my notes that I've gathered. Uh, so I think this I, I will, and see that it starts on, uh, on the pelvis and it's going, it's going to overlap the erectors of the spine here because it's a, it's a big form, right? It overlaps it. Uh, that's where it originates, and it ends up. You see this? What I what I drew here. This is that membrane. That that uh, uh, tendon like skin, very strong here, over this muscle, over the vastus lateralis. So I'm gonna. I'm going to outline it with charcoal here so you can kind of see where it, what it does. Uh, see, it covers up one of the parts of the vast of the gluteus medius here. And then it, of course, doesn't go over the posterior superior iliac spine. As it, it, it goes over the, this is the, the sacrum with the erectus of the spine. And I'm just drawing its boundaries down the cossex, the tailbone. And then it, it depends how big you wanna make it. You know? I respect your decisions here. But see, one, a good measurement is uh, you've got the greater trochanter, then you've got the lesser trochanter that I kind of covered up with the adductor uh, mangus, somewhere a little bit below that, see? And then you want to follow this line here. This is, now down here, this is, the tendon attachment to it. Its major form is up here. Uh, and you, you follow this line here, kind of curve it and it, it does. Right now, I, I'll i use red. I'll use red here so that we can see, that, see it clearly.
so like to kind of have an idea where the muscle form of it is going to to be centered see this is the femur the attachment of the femur to the pelvis see like right here that is kind of like the muscle portion right there you see that i've always liked pastels very much but i haven't done too much of it like but sometimes i see this Pastels is the, is the most uh, chromatic of all mediums it's because it's just a pigment with a little bit of binder. Like in oil painting, you have the pigment totally saturated in oil, in, in linseed oil. And it, it covers up a lot, of the, a lot of the chroma. But in pastel, the intensity of the color is it's just there. You can kind of see it very nicely here and see this and this now I'll, I'll use some white see this here creates like a plane there's a plane of the buttocks See, that's the major form there. Uh, then this, I'm just gonna use white because it's that tendon. But also, you don't want to lose this, the greater troll canter. That's a bony landmark. Like I've been mentioning. A bit of brown here just to show the fibers of this. I have to say, I'm pretty happy with this Bluteus Maximus here. Nice and colorful. So yeah, see, you wanna keep this, you know, this in mind here. This is all that fascia, that membrane. I think I didn't keep batting color. I really like how this looks. Uh, Let me collect my silly. What should I do next? Should I move? Let me move down the leg here. The, from the back section, the, the tibia and the fibula really have only uh, two muscles. So let's finish up this back view and then we'll move on to, uh, to the other, to the side view. So I'm, I'm gonna pick this up. I mean, this is like, there's a lot of fun here. I just gonna keep adding more detail and make it look like muscle.
So I'm going to I'm going to pick up the paper here a little bit. Get a little bit more. See, so this thing doesn't fall. All right, now we're at the the bottom here. You can see you can see this right here. There's the there is the soleus. That's the under underlying form here. The soleus and then the gastrocnemius. And there's some smaller muscles down here, but you know, that's the major forms, those two. Uh, so let me. Let me do this. So you've got tibia, fibula, and uh, the first one that we're going to do here, and uh, the uh, another very important part here is the coming out of the out of the back of the foot here is the Achilles tendon. And the Achilles tendon is very important in this, in this, let me fix my paper here. It's kind of getting a little puffy there. That should be a little bit better. So yeah, let me do it with pencil first. We have the heel growing out of the heel. I'm going to just kind of uh, outline it first. A little bit of white. This is yellow. So that's the start of the Achilles heel or tendon, the Achilles tendon. And then growing out of that, we are going to have what I'm what I'm outlining is the soleus. The soleus does this here. It attaches to the bottom. This is the head of the fibula. See it goes. And a lot of this muscle here is so uh, I'll use uh, virus. Well, of course, I use white. Um, this the soleus has a lot of a lot of tendon. Oh, this is tendon. Here. I'm just going to use clear some white so that I can put the, the violet on top. So that is the soleus. But its muscle form is uh, Rather just up here, like on on its sides.
just to kind of indicate how it grows, you know, that is the, how the muscle kind of grows out of that tendon. That's the soleus, and let me outline it a little bit here. And like I said, this is going to get covered up by the gastric nemius muscle. You see, this is where the muscle scar is. Those lines indicate. And see, then from in this, you've got this space here of, that's left over by the hamstring group. In the bicep femoral, semi-tendinosis, semi-membranosis. In this gap, you have uh, where the the uh, gastrocnemius muscle comes out of. You know, I'll try and, and paint this with the pastels as accurate as I can. But it's, see, it's muscle, this muscle, they share a common tendon, the, the Achilles tendon. See, all of this contour of the lower leg is uh, used up by the gastric medius here. So that's one portion. Now, I'll try and explain its, its structure as I sketch it here. And then it has another portion. But it stays, you've got the tendon of the bicep femoris, it never crosses that tendon. And see on the on the medial form, this form here, this overlaps. But on the lateral form, what creates the contour of the figure is the, and you can see this, it's the, the soleus. And this, this muscle kind of like what this is, you know, it kind of folds like on itself. So I'm gonna use, uh, I'll use blue here to match, to match the, the binder, even though they have them in different colors. So. And this,
and this you can see on the back of your of your leg this very interesting structure here. They kind of look like bunny ears. Something like that. And to show how it kind of grows out of the tendon here. Everybody has very, I think almost everybody has very distinct uh, gastrocnemius. I think they're an easy muscle to work out. So there, that is the soleus is the one underneath. Then on the one on top, it's the gastrocnemius muscle. And down here, this is the outside of the ankle here. And you see, I have this form here. This is the peroneus brevis. So we want to fill that in right now. Let's make that orange here. Yellow. Let me clarify that with some, some charcoal here. This is a tendon. This I, I overshot it, I think I made it too thick. To disconnect my mouse, and also to yeah. <clears throat> this is uh, From this angle, this is behind the bone here. Peroneus brevis, that's what that is, and that's the tendon.
And there's a little bit, just so it doesn't look as empty down here. Of course, our, the, the leg, of course, tapers. And it's very narrow here at the bottom, but there are a few muscles here. And these are the flexors for the, for the toes here. This is called the flexor digitorium longus. This one looks a little bit more cool than the tendon. Okay, so that is, that concludes the back portion. Oh, we still got like an hour. We'll be close to finishing, very close. Okay, let's do, because we're on this view, on this, we have the front and the, we have the side and the back, we're just gonna move on to the, to the side view. So we're gonna lower this. And I will squirt it over. Maybe a little more. That's the general area we're going to focus on. And I'm looking here at my for my notes. So look here, th this to help us kind of uh, get started on this view. Uh, and it'll start to make more sense. I'm going to start off on the, we can see a little bit of this other one here. That'll be beneficial to us. So look, what I have here is the side view of the um, the hamstring group. This is here on from this side we see the bicep femoris right there. And so we'll do we'll do that one. And I had a, I'll start out the same way. Uh, but see, look here, I'll, I'll draw some of this with the, with my charcoal pencil. Uh, you've got the, the femur. And see, I've got that, that highlight to indicate that ridge. And this over here, uh, let me lower it down a little bit. Uh, you've got the head of the, this is the head of the fibula. 
and you've got that ridge. And up here, you've got the EQ of tuberosity, but the side view, right? So from up here, I can do it with white first. And this goes all the way down. See, overlapping the bottom here of the to the head of the tibula. And then I use, I believe I use yellow here so that it can stand out a little bit more. And then just to kind of draw the shape of it, this is what it does. It gets and I'll make corrections as I see fit here later on. It's hard to take care then it tapers. So this is the long hair, like I mentioned, yes, it's bicep femur, but it has two portions. And uh, The short head, it occupies this space here. I'm not going to color this in just so you know what this is. It occupies that space. It comes down here. See that I'm, I'm trying to figure out a way to do this quicker here, more quickly. Uh, the tendon. So we do see this part of this, but a, a dominant form here, which you don't see on this drawing because I removed it. I show you on this other drawing. See, this is, a, this is the vastus lateralis. It covers up a big portion of the short head of the bicep humorous. So where does that go? I mean, it makes no sense to spend time, too much time on that side view. I think I have another going where I demonstrate what that looks like, if I can find it. I think this one shows it pretty well. I think I have another one that shows it a little bit more clear. Um, see this portion. So I'm, I'm gonna draw these. Uh, this is the, the vastus vastus lateralis here. The big muscle. This is the one I'm going to cover in first from this side view here. Got that big meaty part of the drumstick. And then this becomes uh, connected to the kneecap by another tendon. This is, there's a common tendon also here that it's shared with the muscles of the front of the leg here. Like this. So all of this is gonna get covered up. Uh, and I, I did this blue on the other 
can find the right solution. So first I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put white. This is the vastest lateralis. And see, it overlaps a lot of the bicep femoris there. And then at the bottom here, this is tendon. White, but a yellow. I used orange, and then this is I said the worst. As you see very clear on your on your leg here. You can feel this really, really nicely on your leg. You know, it's towards the back, towards the back of your leg, behind the knee. There you have. Two muscles. And there's a little bit here. Of a muscle called the vastus internus. Because keep in mind that we only see a little bit here. But it helps in adding mass to the to the upper leg because when we do the other muscles here, the, the rectus femoris, the vastus medialis, you kind of feel like they're just floating there. But keep in mind this muscle, it's a, it goes in around the, the femur. But we, we see very little of it here. And then the tensor of the gluteus maximus and the other tensor coming over here, they overlap it. So we just see little bit, little bits of it, little pieces of it, but it's a big, a big part of the of the upper leg underneath all this. That's the vastus internus. And some catching to bring out that form. So what else do we see here? Um, I can do here. 
again, you don't want to lose that. See that that shape and the outline a little bit better. This is that bony landmark, the greater trochanter. You can tap your, your you can find it very easily there. Just kind of bend your arm. If you're standing, bend it towards you and then just like go towards your leg and you'll hit it right there. Uh, okay, so I can do I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw in here the gluteus medius. That's what this line is. And uh, the gluteus medius. So it attaches. You know, to the top here, very top here of the greater trochanter. The little portion there that it's, I'm gonna, I'm gonna attach this to it. And let it close, go closer there. And I'm going to cover it in. And like I had said, this has three forms. On the back, you only saw two of them. One, two. This is the one that gets overlapped by the gluteus maximus. Bit of streakiness of this to show that the forms of the muscle here. Now, before I go any further here, you know, this, this area here and this one, remember these, the anterior superior iliac spine, the anterior inferior, uh, I don't think I remember these because there's a, uh, From this angle, you have, we're gonna see, we're gonna see a little bit. Okay, I need, we're gonna add a little bit more and I cut this too short here. I'm missing about this much of this muscle here.
Vastus lateralis, even more. See, we're going to put this muscle gets overlapped by the vastus lateralis. This is the rectus femoris. We see a little bit of, from this perspective. Uh, and I'll use. It's not from the top one, but from the, the one below that. Make it wide here. to outline it. Just to show that it's behind the vastus lateralis with the shading here. And then look over here. Remember this orange, the this was the sartorius. This comes up from up here. We'll, we'll see a little bit. This it attached way at the top here. And I'm gonna I'm gonna indicate it. Orange. And this is behind the rectus femoris. Yellow just to bring it out more. And I wanted to put those in because overlapping, we've got this gap here, right? So in that area, we have this muscle here. See this purple one? This overlaps the uh, gluteus medius. It has this kind of tear, like a teardrop shape here. And it's the tensor. No, the fascia lata or fascia latte. I 
attaches at the same at, at the anterior superior iliac spine here. And it has that the fascia, the the, mem the membrane, the, the tendon, it goes over the vastus lateralis like this, and it attaches to the top here. to the head of the tibia, right next to the bicep femoris. You know, some books have it like doing this, and then some books have it becoming part of the, of the membrane or tendon that is part of the, of the gluteus maximus. I'm going to leave it like this and put a little bit of yellow to show that it's that membrane. And this, you, you, you can see this when you tense your leg, that's what it's called a tensor. You can see it, you can see these lines very clearly. So from this perspective, we just need the gluteus uh, maximus now on the top of the leg here. So I want to, I'm thinking he looks too thin here. So it's a matter of uh, giving more volume to this guy here. The legs, I think this should come out like this. That looks a little bit more full. My fingers getting all too muddy here too. Anything I touch is like getting brown. Or something like that. Maybe not there, something like that. Show the overlap. So now I can uh, see that the membrane uh, goes to the gluteus maximus. It kind of crosses over the greater trochanter like this. And this is the part that it gets uh, overlapped. 
time, at Linus Maximus. And then it should come out some considerably. This see this this is the these are the, the erector of the spines. Look at what where the contour is and the, the volume of the gluteus maximus projects out of it. Make sure if, if you started out from there and right from, from the contour of the erectus of the spine here and from the, from the sacrum, it'll look like he has a very small gluteus maximus. So, so that it looks more, more realistic, you know, more precise. You have to add this volume to it. From this side, it covers up the posterior, superior, iliac spine, you know, but it, but that's okay. I mean, that's okay. That's the mass that you want to give it, and then I will fill it in with. Uh, my red. So let me bring this white. Right here. Let's move the flag here to show the overlap over the gluteus. So that's the upper leg and uh, we'll, I don't know we'll finish, but we'll be very close to finish. Let me pick this up. One 
more. We can <clears throat> lower this here. There we go. So you can see both of them. All right, so here <clears throat> we're going to start off go at the bottom here. This is the heel we, like I did before. Remember, we have we have here the Achilles tendon. This is a very strong tendon. Remember, like if you ever watch. Uh, how they prepare animals in the ranchos. When they slaughter an animal, they stick a fork in here after they slaughtered and it pulls up the whole weight. Uh, and there were some cruel, very cruel ways of punishing slaves and convicts back in the, back in medieval times. And uh, when you, you try to escape, Part of the torture was to hang you from the tendon. There's such a strong tendon, they would hang you upside down just for a few days. Uh, like this. I got my whole family signed up. Really? Like your brothers too? Travis signed up the same day and time as us. Uh -huh. So we get all three go. Can you tell Lumi? So this is the Achilles tendon. And the first thing we're gonna do here is I'm gonna show the attachment of the soleus. See where the soleus comes in. And I have used violet or white. Soleus on the side here. And we have the, the muscle portion here. It's rather high. Then I can look over here and bring this over to show you when the gas trapezius goes in behind the bicep femoris. And it's, it's right on top of the soleus. I'm just drawing it in. I will fill it in.
Remember, this is all it's on top of the Soviet and then behind behind here the attendant of the bicycle wars here. So see, this is a thick form, then this is a thin form. And then right next to this, so here. I'm going to outline the next uh, muscle here. This is the peroneus longus. I will fill it in with color and look. It's thick, thin, and then it gets thick here. This gets overlapped considerably here, which is this is the soleus. Learning with white here today. Then I'll put red over it. So this is peroneus because when well, Spanish it's tibia and perone. So because on, on top of the of the of the fibula, which in Spanish is perone, that's what it's called peroneus longus. And then the tendon goes here behind the ankle here. Peroneus longus. Tendon. See, there's a pattern here of like thick, thin, thick, and then it'll be a thin muscle and then another thick muscle. And down here we have peroneus brevis. And they share the same tendon. So here. I'll also make this, I'll make it pink, a darker root. I will make it a darker root, pink here. Peronius brevis. And then this is the tibia. And so the muscle that goes on the tibia, and it goes on the front of the tibia, it is called the tibialis. In the front, it's called the tibialis anterior. Make this a yellow green. 
I've left the gap there, and that will be for the next uh, and the last muscle. There's more, but I think that's uh, that is the primary muscle. So this is a very long muscle, so it's gonna have longest attached to it. And very much like the extensors of the arm, this is the extensor digitorum longus. Comes all, it, what it uses up all this space here. I make it more blue, a darker blue. So there, those are the those are the muscles of the lower leg. And see, like uh, like up here, uh, the knee is of course the kneecap is attached here with the tendon to the tibia. And he, in here you have, you know, ligaments and, and cartilage and a little bit of fat. Like it's not gonna be, an empty, it's not gonna be a, just an empty gap there under the skin. There's other, there's cartilage caps and other things that fill in that, that space. So we, I want to keep going. We got to do the front view. I think this one by fairly quickly and we'll do it. Eh, we don't, I don't think we'll finish the whole front leg because it'll probably be here like another hour. But I want to add some to the, to the front of the leg. Uh, I'm going to take this down. Thank 
So here we've got the front view. So let me look here, let me show you the notes. We'll do a few of these songs. Yeah, I'm like, I'm giving my best shot here. So front view of the upper leg. Uh, so let, I'm, I'm gonna outline what's going on here. And then like I did on the side, because a lot of this will get covered up. Uh, <clears throat> for example here, uh, you want to remember the greater curl canter is the lesser curl canter. Use that as kind of like a, as a guide. And right underneath there, I'm going to do this here. I'm going to go up. And this muscle here, comes from the edge of the, of the hip. These are the part of the adductor muscles. This is the, this is the, this is the deepest one here that we see affect the surface area of the upper leg, of the front of the upper leg. So this is the pectaneous muscle here. Then next to this, you have the, ad, the adductor longus as opposed to the adductor uh, magnus here. So there'll be a little gap there. And it does this kind of form comes down to the fifth head measurement. The adductor longus, and then there's the adductor brevis. Most of this is gonna get covered up. Maybe a little wider at the top. And then right here, you have the, a little bit of the, this we saw also on the back view, that very thin kind of a belt-like form, the gracilis. I believe I had done that one in yellow. 
And see, I'm just, I'm, this, this goes all the way down to the head of the, of the tibia. But from this perspective, we only see a little bit here. And see, you, you might be able to see this line in pencil here, very thin line that indicates the middle of, of the body. And that's, that's where this muscle is gonna be. In, in a little bit, I'll, I'll cover it up where there's uh, gonna be muscles coming here. The, Vestas medialis, rectus femoris, vestas lateralis. And then coming here, we have that adductor longus here. I'll make this a uh, red orange. You see, I'm, I'm stopping this again. No point in going any further because they're going to get covered up. And then most of the adductor brevis here is also gonna get covered up. So just stop it there. Bring some of this cover over. And then to indicate that this other muscle is farther away and deeper in there is, I'm gonna put a little bit of blue on it white to make it opaque. This is a pectaneous. Coming in from inside the pelvis here. From under the Rectus abdominis. And then See, there's this, I left this gap here uh, from this portion of the rectus abdominis. Not, the rectus abdominis, where is the muscle in this? You've got this, um, this membrane. There's, a, there's an opening here for another muscle that comes from the, in, you know, the inside of the, uh, of, the, of the pelvis. And it attaches, this is the lesser trochanter, it attaches there right next to the bacteria here. green, yellow green to indicate. Rectaneous, and then this is just to indicate that it's coming from under the rectus abdominis tendon and the pectaneus. It's a 
very particular name, ilioapsis. And you might, you can't, it's off the screen here, but now I'm going to, I'm gonna work on these three muscles here. You've got the knee, the kneecap, and from the kneecap you have, like I had mentioned, you've got the common tendon here. It does this. So we, we'll just outline it and then we'll stop because I think I think I can crank this out on Monday. Now I'm getting winded with all this drawing. I, I enjoy this, but for just two hours of drawing, trying to name all these muscles. See, these are the primary muscles that go in front of, in front of the femur. Um, This is the vastus, uh, medialis, rectus femoris, vastus lateralis here. Uh, this orange one is actually, it's gonna actually overlap. Okay, now that we moved on to these, I'll go ahead. So it has a common tendon here, has three portions. So it has this portion for the vastus medialis, rectus femoris, and vastus lateralis. That is that common tendon. And see up here, this is gonna give you the vastus lateralis. Which will get overlapped by the rectus femoris. Kind of follows that contour of, of the of the femur there. Now keep in mind underneath is the vastus internus. And then this one the vastus medialis here. This actually goes into the back of the femur to that ridge that we saw from the back view. Goes all the way in there. So I'll do this here. We'll bring this a little bit further down, and then this space gets occupied by the 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 structure of this with this orange one is very much like the gracilis, is like a belt, you know, very long. That's what's gonna go in here. So this goes all the way back. And then from the anterior, inferior iliac spine here, that, that's where the, the rectus femoris comes.
So we'll leave it there. I think I'm run out of juice.